All right. Ladies and gentlemen, guys, gals, non-binary pals, friends of Frisbee all around the world here in New Zealand, Aotearoa, welcome to the final match of the New Zealand Tertiary Ultimate Championships here between the thus far undefeated AUUC Flood and University of Otago's Toroa Flood to start off on defense. My name is Blair Munro. My name is Genevieve Palmer. And we are your eyes and ears on the ground to give you context and commentary throughout this amazing and exciting match that we're about to see here. Graydon Scott on the far sideline, marked by Lee Yo. A big shot goes up. Graydon Scott takes it down. The point goes to Tortoa to start off with. Great early work there by the Otago offense. Managing to put up some long options, trusting those deep receivers like Graydon Scott to put in the work. Walk down with the point. The flood offensive side now. That core group. Holloway, Ford, Miller Mercer. Zaria Island, Troy Stevenson on the near sideline. And Woodlock tries to tow that in, not able to get it. Otago University, a great opportunity here to go up by two over Flood. Graydon Scott's going to pick up the disc, marked by Holloway. Supported by Hugo Swinson, marked by Miller Mercer. Puts up a backhand, Troy Stevenson. Not able to shut that down. Number six, Josh Cooper for Tortoa, put one over the DC's Birdman. And just look at the excitement of the Otago team here. You can see they really want it coming out into the field, fighting for the final. Could not agree more. You look at the talent base for AUC Flood. There's a huge depth of ability there. It's a massive deal for Toro to be able to turn this around and put a win over them and walk away with a gold. University of Otago have managed to field, I think, three teams for this tournament. They've managed to put in a huge effort really driving up the interest and, and really getting the engagement from their student body, which is a fantastic effort. Uh, could not happen without the support of University and Tertiary Support New Zealand, of course, who are helping us to bring this tournament to you today in conjunction with Sky Sport Next and in partnership with Ulti TV. For more exciting ultimate events like this, if you want to make sure that they keep happening, don't be afraid to give us a bit of support. Head over to patreon.com slash altitv. Throw us your spare change. You're not using it. Huge pull from Scott. A lot of edge down. It's going to roll. Perfect opportunity there. Get a roll out the back of the end zone so it can be brought, uh, brought to the front of the zone. Huge pull low, plenty of time for the Otago defense to get into position. Otago working with a zone defense. 
unable to stop the flood offense as they move around, working past these Otago players. That same handler core on offense, Holloway, Ford, Mercer. A lot of pressure being put on flood here. But now they're in a position where they've broken past. And the momentum stops. They swing back the other way, even though there's a huge amount of space there. Breaks it through the middle. Ella Lamb. Back to Ford. And Troy Stevenson for the score. 2-1 uh, in favor of Toroa. But Flood are putting a point on the board. They are answering with their own. Making sure that Toroa know that it's not going to be as easy as those first two points were. Some great offense there, very, very smooth. And now it's time to flood, for Flood to bring down the defense to see what they can do to stop the very, very impressive Otago Toro aside. Now an opportunity for us to see what the Toro offense are planning to do. Simple as that, a little bit of a miss throw early on. Leo finds Connor Kiefta near sideline. Juju takes Massive to ground. Grab. Amazing save. Connor Kiefta again. Great upline cut. Wanting to close this one out. Just overthrows Leo, who takes to the skies. A little bit of Superman dive. It's not quite enough. It's important to recognize as well that the, the length of these rosters. Flood has more players during a game to draw from. Ben to Lynch to Callum Shimon. Happy Liddell gets it with a layout, puts a big shot up. And they managed to walk away with it. Great work by Otago Torua. Great long, long bomb from Abby Liddell. Goes over the hands of the intended receiver, but that teamwork that Torua have demonstrated over the course of the weekend is in place. They've got someone there to pick it up. Great work there by Toroa. Josh Cooper with the score there. It all comes down to this, folks. The two best teams in the tournament, Otago Toroa and AUUC Flood. Two titans of the sport at the tertiary level clashing together. Liddell with a great pull. Island, far side line. Fumbles the quick give and go. Hey, 
Swenson, number 22, finds Fatanovic. Marked by Lamb. It's not enough to stop the high shot going up, but a pick's been called. And play resumes. Huge amount of pressure. A travel is called. Swinson slips past Mercer. Up the far sideline, Graydon Scott. Big backhand. Number 14, Matthew Whitaker. Amazing score despite a great defensive bid from Flood. Huge work here as Toro go up by three. The score now 4-1 in favor of the side from Otago. Flood in a bit of a bind, having to think what adjustments they need to make to keep themselves in this game. Historically a dominant force in tertiary ultimate on the back foot against the might of the south. Twelve and a half minutes into our 90 minute game, playing to 15. But there's no pressure after all, it's only the final match. Both teams hungry for gold. Great pull from the Tortua defense. Stevenson to Crosby. Jojo open early. Working with Crosby, trying to reestablish some structure in the downfield uh, offense. All the way to Stevenson. Back to Stevenson, Lee Yo developing a massive deep cut. Oh, Again, Juan. we're seeing that AUUC flood patience coming out to play. Just slowly moving it across the field until they find space to bang it through the middle. And it's worked for them this time. Great work, looks like Jojo with the score. Julia Jojo, number 18 on a sneaky little upline cut after, as you say, that great patience from the AUC, slowly working the disc, slowly progressing meter by meter towards the end zone until something at last opens up and reveals itself until they capitalize and put the score on the board. We see again Troy Stevenson, quick dish across to Coral Huang, to Holloway, through to Jeju for the score. Four, two, still to Otago. It and looks it looks like, like a timeout has been called. That's right. Flood just called a timeout, maybe just to have a little chat, just get things under control a bit from their end, figure out how they can take this game away for them. Okay, so we'll be back in just a little while uh, after this timeout break. So we've just broken after that early timeout. 
The score currently 4-2 in favour of Tordua. But it's Flood who will come down on defence. Crosby with a big pull. Shimon and Cooper working together. Finds Graydon Scott. Big backhand goes up. Looking for Helena Svetanovic. But the defense is too much. Well, looks, looks like, like a, a foul has been called down there. Too many people in the same place at once. <laughs> so we're going to get to see that again. Graydon Scott, big rip. tricky to say what happened there. Sometimes it's almost too difficult to say even when you're playing the game. It all comes down to whether the person who was making a bid on the desk was entering someone else's space or not. But it looks like there's six people ha having a discussion down there, so we'll see what they come up with. Yeah. Off that big pull, toward that big rip towards the end zone, towards the end of the replay, you could see there with three players from each team all closing in. And so it does create a little bit of danger. It looks like the call's been retracted. So the turnover's going to stand. AUUC Flood with an opportunity now to bring it back within one. Crosby to initiate the offense. As AUC Flood set up in a vertical stack. One of the more conventional ultimate offensive structures. Early cut from Zaria Island, marked hard by Abby Liddell, but as she slashes across the front of the stack, she gets the separation she's looking for. Crosby all the way through to Jeju. Bit of a travel there, but nobody calls it. Yeah. Owen with a massive grab and a cannon of a forehand looking for Quok. And he comes Smashed down with it. in the end zone. Huge applause from Flood from the sideline. Great bid by Matthew Whitaker, but he gets put on a poster by Quok as he brings it back within one. We're going to get the opportunity to see that again. Huge disc brought down by Owen Sun. Puts one up of his own. Whitaker in hot pursuit. Quark says no. What a beautiful disc. Great read, nice attempt at boxing by Whitaker, but a little bit just positionally or, or something wasn't quite there in order for him to get the block, which gives Flood the point, puts the momentum a little bit back in their favor, gives them an opportunity to tie the game here off a great defensive point.
Nice pull there by Holly Mace, number 14 for the flood side. Crosby and, and Lee Yo working really hard to force the disc backwards. Graydon Scott, disc in hand. Waiting for something to develop downfield. He wants to unleash that big throw that he's got. Max Benter Lynch now marked by Crosby. Finds Abby Liddell. Puts up a massive forehand. Leo goes up, takes that defense. Crosby with the desk, finds Yo in a field. Moves wide out to Crosby again. Very static. Uh, a bit disjointed, some of these cuts, the, the timing's a little off, they're not making those connections that they've, we've seen them make in other games. Yo puts a big one up. Finds Jeju again. Right outside the their end zone. Crosby slams on the brakes, gets open, puts up a big hammer. It's good. It's good. It's good question mark. <laughs> it looked good. It did look good. It's just a question of whether it hit the ground, I suppose. We're going to get to see that again. It looks like she has, I mean, she definitely had possession. Great deceleration by James Crosby before he drops the big hammer. Oh, that is a tough call. It's really hard to see, even from our perspective, even on slow-mo, as whether or not there was control beforehand. But it looks like they're calling that a point. So it's going to be good. Flood bringing it back to a tied game. 4-4 against the University of Otago Toroa. Some great hustle and well rewarded. Again, Yo's long shot to Jirju, catching it off the back foot. Quick reset to Crosby, big hammer cross field to Mace. She's able to make it good. Okay, so with the tied game, everything on the line in the final match of the New Zealand Tertiary Ultimate Championships 2022. Flood to come down on defense. A pull with a little bit of roll. Quite a bit of roll, I think. But they're able to stop it in bounds. Great pressure on that defense, slowly forcing them back. Bridget Leg on the far sideline, marked by Chloe Topping. Trying to get the disc to Hugo Swinson. He manages to get separation from Crosby to take it. Emily McCauley Scott with the disc now. Marked by Liv Weary. Finds Swinson midfield. They've not made a lot of progress up the field until now. Helena Svetanovic, marked by Giorgio. Leg with a great upline cut. A little bit clustered on terms of defense. A bit of collision there. Topping putting the mark on. Nice. Josh Cooper unable to get it. Has to go up line. Yo with a great big bid to get the turn. It's not going to be a point today. Oh, 
But a violation has been called, or not a violation rather, a stoppage has been signalled. As to the nature of the stoppage. Okay, so we will resume play. Great take by Weary, but a pick's been called. So just a reminder that unlike in basketball, players aren't allowed to use other players' as screens. Uh, if a defender's uh, pursuit is impeded by the movements of other players, that constitutes a pick. And the defensive player is allowed to catch up to where they believe they would have been. Uh, Owen San going long. Great early play by Josh Cooper forces Owen Sun to mistime his jump. He's not able to get it. That's going to be a turn for Otago. Looks like it's going to be Swenson working with Svetanovic. Oh, tries to put a bit much power in it. It comes through low. That's going to be an opportunity now for AUUC. But can they capitalize on it? James Crosby, one of the cornerstones of the flood offense. Puts one out wide to Yo. Oh, what Excellent a great secure Lillian catch. Lillian Parker. Crosby takes a bit of a tumble, well, but a stoppage was called. Okay, so they've retracted the call. Play's going to resume with the disc where it is. Some good discussion on the field. Some great exhibition of spirit from both teams. This comes in. James has got it in hand. Owen Sun's got separation. Not able to shift the tight mark of Swinson in time. Yo's attempted a continuation. Shut down by the aggressive Graham Scott defense. Owen Sun with the low laser beam. Just off the hands of Topping, not able to put the point on the board. Some good communication, great movement to get us there. We have one injury call, number 24 from Otago. Bridget Leg going off. Being substituted for Amelia Mance. Toroa with a chance now. Ooh, looks like there may have been contact on the throw. Graydon Scott manages to get it despite the impressive bid by Yo. Works the width to find Swinson. Channels one up the midfield for Cooper. Tries to signal for Macaulay Scott to take some yards. Hard cuts underneath. It's an option, but it's looked off in favor of Sutanovic. An aggressive backhand again. Finding Swinson this time. No turnover for Otago. Braden Scott chop steps to get inside. Another huge bid by Yo. Puts a there massive forehand up. He's looking for Cooper. Sun's underneath it. Sun gets a touch, but there's a foul called. <laughs> Definitely necessary to have a conversation. Cooper had great position. Owen Sun, amazing closing speed. And he had the reach, but the question is whether it was clean. We 
And here we get that replay yet again. Regardless, the call was contested. So they're deciding that they can't make up their mind as to whether or not the foul curl occurred as described. So the disc is going to go back to the last uncontested possession, which was Greg and Scott. It correctly states an instruction for the rest of the field to return to where they were when the throw went up as it was a contested play. So it's almost as if the last 15 or so seconds of game did not happen. And just to take it, puts a big one up. Graydon's got a lot of separation, but it's too, too much behind that throw. A little too many wheat picks. It's very tempting at this point in a competition as well to put those long points and get those points on the board quickly. But as we've seen from previous games, patience sometimes is the way to do it. Absolutely. A little bit, bit too much boom, a little bit, not enough zoom. So Flood with a chance, taking the disc, center field. Crosby, near sideline, gets a massive bite from Swinson, but he doesn't use the window because nothing's happening downfield. Finds Livweary. Over the top of Svetanovic on defense. Topping gets the disc. Great work. Juju wide open. It's not going to happen. Slows down. Starts to have the defense close in a little bit. Comes all the way back around. Yo's got an option. Decides not to take it. A little bit of a tumble from Sun in the downfield. But he seems to be okay. Oh, Crosby just over Swinson. Owen Sun. Crosby again. Puts a massive forehand up looking for Lillian Parker. She's making it run. There, there it is. is. That's what Flood needed to see. They take the lead for the first time in the game at the 33 minute mark, 5-4 over Tordor. What a phenomenal performance there by the AUC offense. Some great work, huge vision, huge forehand, puts one up. This is exactly <laughs> what we expect for a final. Absolutely, great chase there by Parker to close that one down, miles of separation from Rose Ursum, manages to reel that one in. Every single pass, every play, all fits in together to create these opportunities. What an absolute rip. Sees the separation, uncorks the massive forehand. Whoo! Crosby again, long throw, puts up a low pull. Fielded, quickly moved up the far sideline. Amelia Mance tries to make a deep cut, doesn't come away. Swinson. Puts one out front. Cooper, but a pick's been called. So just while they resolve this, one point in it, 35 minutes into a 90 minute game, race to 15. 
Ben to Lynch, outpaces Troy Stevenson on an upline cut. Great undercut there from Liddell. Despite the great bid from Ireland, Cooper puts one up. Amelia Mance brings it back to even. We are on serve. 5-5 five, five in the final of the New Zealand Tertiary Ultimate Championships 2022 in Kirikiriroa Hamilton. Proudly supported by University and Tertiary Sport New Zealand, the team at Ulti TV, and in conjunction with Sky Sport Next. Get to see that again. Nice bid from Ireland, but Liddell's got the secure hands. Pops one ahead, finds Cooper. Mance in the front corner of the end zone. Separation enough from Mace to make it count. Exactly what you would hope to see in a final. Two evenly matched teams trading. No clear advantage as Benta Lynch puts up a big pull. It's fading high and right. It's going to touch down outside. Just inside. Threads a laser through. Finds Mercer. Big forehand looking for Ireland. She traces it down. Great take just outside of the end zone where she does most of her work. Finds Ford, high across, Emma Whitlock, the baby blue bomber, manages to get that score down. Putting one on the board for Flood. Only a few passes at that point, three, maybe four. Really good disc movement. Great chase by the female matching players on that line. Island to close that long shot. And then a quick reset, opening up the field for Emma Whitlock to score a point. Taking Flood back up by one, holding on to the lead they narrowly established over the last couple of points. We get to see that again. Ford with a quick two-step, takes the reset, threads one all the way through to Whitlock for the score. Amazing point there. Now we'll see what they're able to do on defense. Holly Mace, number 14 for the flood side. With the disc, lining up to pull. Great disc. Pushing to the far sideline, just past halfway. The Otago offense slowly working. Swinson center field. Helena Svetanovic. Too much pressure from the defense. Has to go back to find Benton Lynch. Great pressure. Svetanovic not able to get there. But an injury's been called. Troy Stevenson taking place for Leo.
Some great work by the Flood offense. Stevenson on the far sideline finds Mason center field. Great work, nice mobile movement of the disc. Owen Sun takes one from Parker in the near sideline. Stevenson comes down with it. His height making the better for it. Absolutely, Birdman takes the skies, pulls one down to open up the gap to a two point lead. Flood seven over, Toro a five. Looks like we have a timeout called as well. Bit of time for both teams to have a chat, figure out how they're gonna play this next half. Flood thinking how can they get a few more points on the board and really secure it for them. Toro are maybe thinking about what they need to do just to shape their game a little bit differently bring it back to a bit more even. Yeah, we've seen some really clinical and patient offense on display from Flood. We've seen something a little bit more, maybe more, less clinical, perhaps more optimistic, maybe reliant on on just raw power from the Toro side to try and make things happen for them. So we'll see what adjustments get made of the next few points. AUC Flood one away from half. Flood want this point to put away the first half as early as they can. <laughs> Zaria Island with the disc. A little bit of last minute coaching from coach Ethan Taylor. bit of guidance as to where that pull should end up as he calls those matchups relying on his knowledge of the opposition as well as of his own team to try and create the best opportunity defensively to generate a turn and close out the half huge desk touching down inbounds exactly what they need Amelia Mance gets the disc. Marked by Wary. Some great downfield cuts, but they're pressured heavily. Callum Shimon wanting to get rid of the disc. Finds Amelia Mance, but it looks like a stall was, uh, was called. Players having 10 seconds to release the disc once they take possession of it as counted by their opposition. All the pressure on that defense generated that turn there. They weren't able to get rid of it in time. That's one of the key things. Topping to Weary. Owen Sun manages to pull away. Crosby there, there to clean that one up. Intended receiver Jeju, but the curve on the disc took it high over her head. Crosby there to close that one out as Flood take half. Amazing effort by this Auckland side to come down from 2-0 and gradually fire themselves up, put some points on the board and take half against the very impressive Otago Toroa. Uh, but as the teams take a short break to reflect and consolidate, uh, we will take a short break as well and be back with you very, very soon.
But until then, my name is Blair Munro. My name is Genevieve Palmer. And it is our privilege to bring you this coverage with Ulti TV of the final match of the 2022 New Zealand Tertiary Ultimate Championships. Only one New Zealand university is ranked among the top 1% of universities in the world and in the top 40 universities under 50 years of age. Auckland University of Technology, New Zealand's leading modern university. Home to world-class academics, called on for their research expertise here and all over the world, making AUT the New Zealand leader in global research impact. Connected to an extraordinary range of organizations worldwide. Focused on a rapidly changing future where creativity, curiosity, and collaboration will only become more vital. We inspire, nurture, and find the greatness in every single one of our students. We are AUT, New Zealand's leading modern university. Only one New Zealand university is ranked among the top...
we are back for the second half. Nice little highlight package for you there, showing some of the most dynamic moments of the first half of this final match for the New Zealand Tertiary Ultimate Championships 2022 between Otago Toroa and the AUC Flood. AUC Flood taking half time in this game to 15, the first team to reach eight points. Ahead by three, and with the fortunate opportunity of coming out on offense. Holloway, Ford, Mers. So those three core handlers for Flood as we set up in a horizontal stack. Targeting the near sideline, finding him a Whitlock. Trying to put one long for Ella Lamb. A little bit on the long side. She's not able to chase that one down. Would have been a great early score to open off the second half. But it doesn't always come out the way that you drew it up. So Otago with an opportunity now. Ireland trying to pressure it. Svetanovic able to shift her, get a disc off to Graydon Scott. Huge cut from Matthew Whitaker downfield. It's not rewarded. Ireland trying to put that pressure on. Ford not able to generate an error there, so Graydon Scott retains possession. Swinson, but Alan Lamb gets the run through block. Finds Mercer early. Put something big up, looking for Troy Stevenson, and he comes down with it. On top of someone else. But he does come down with it. It looks like they'll call that a point. And they have. So AUUC Flood explodes out of the gate in the second half. Going nine. Over the Toro five. Would not mind seeing that again. A lamb with a great, great intercept finds Miller Mercer. His characteristic forehand form. Stevenson goes up, <laughs> takes out two of the Toro players with him. Just a friendly reminder to Troy Stevenson, it is a non-contact sport. I'm sure he'll hear that when he watch it, watches it back again live later. So Flood to come down on defense. After a great start to the second half, we've just crossed the 54 minute mark with a soft cap of 90. But the pace of the offense both of these teams are putting on, it's quite likely we'll hit the point cap first. Two very athletic teams, a lot of speed and agility. We, we are, are a group, group of ultimate players, coaches, and video enthusiasts. We've worked with the major federations and the greatest events. We're on a mission to make ultimate huge. We want our videos and live. And there's the pull. Toroa initiating. Shimon in position. Looked off for a reset. Graydon Scott. Marked by Kwok. Puts one up. Finds Liddell. Shimon again. A little bit of a fumble, but he keeps his hands on it. And a pick has been called downfield. Amelia Mance, forehand up the line, finds Graydon Scott. Shimon takes it just outside of the end zone, has to work backwards. And as the rest of the field does nothing but stand in space and watch, they're not able to work it through. Whew. 
great defensive pressure there from the Otago side. Not able to get away with it though. Quark finds Sun. Marked by Benta Lynch. Stall count's getting a little bit high. Quark's able to get the reset comfortably. A pick has been called. Unsure who called it and why. A play resumes. Owen Sun, far sideline. Bentelich applying too much pressure. Where he tries to get the reset, but it's Holly Mace. Where he now marked by Mance. Sun taking that handler roll. A great bid. But it's Mace who comes away with it over Liddell. Crosby on the up line, marked by Josh Cooper. Puts one through. Finds Quok for the score. A great opportunity to see that again. Crosby. To Quok. Despite a great bid from the Toro defense, it's not enough. Flood. Make it 10 over the Toro of five. Rapidly approaching the one hour mark. Currently in our 58th minute. The signal being given for a female matching majority on the point. heavily in uh, in the direction of Flood despite a great early start from Toro. The disc fading. Nice lot of float. Not too far from the near sideline. Good distance. Topping with a big chase. Trying to pressure Svetanovic. Who's able to get one away anyway. Graydon Scott. Nothing but ambition. Nearly manages. But it's Yo with the disc. Nice line drive. Finds Owen Sun. And great Brilliant run through D block. There. Great work by Abby Liddell. Turns it into a deep cut. So Able to pull, to it, pull down. it down. Can they convert it into a point? Great put by Swenson. Cooper now, back to Svetanovic. Swinson on the upline mark, heavily by Owen Sun. It's not going to come away. Crosby trying to stop Cooper doing anything productive with the disc. Bridget Leg on the far sideline, puts one up. Liddell comes down with it. A great score. Nothing but one-handed big grabs from number, uh, number 18 for the Otago Toroa. Abby Liddell converts it and scores it. Six to 10, flood up by four. Great work there by the Toro side. Some fantastic offense. There it is, we're gonna see it again. Swinson puts up the big bomb. Jojo tries, doesn't come away. Liddell brings it down. And then it ends up Cooper. Bridget Leg, big left backhand. Comes down with it. Just at the back of the zone. Beautiful play there. An absolute feather in the cap of Abby Liddell for this game, if not the whole tournament. Some great work there.
And now we're going to see how the flood choose to respond. Mercer first to pick up with Ford. Finds Ireland. Works back, sees Mercer. Swinson applying pressure on the defense. Emma Whitlock takes the up line, but a pick's been called. Rose Ursum unable to pursue. Admits that she may not have had the play on the disc, but should still be in a position where she's able to defend Emma Whitlock after that cut. Mercer finds Lamb on the far sideline. Ogilvy not letting it be thrown. All Slips that pressure Ireland's from hands. Ogilvy. The throw, maybe not ideal. Ireland not able to get a hand to it, as you say. Swinson and Svetanovic starting off that offense. Matt Whitaker. Ben to Lynch. Catching one through the middle. Svetanovic pointing, trying to direct traffic, trying to get the movement that's going to open something up in the downfield. Swinson puts one out wide. Svetanovic again signaling. We see Matt Whitaker oh, no. call an injury. A slip by Matthew Whitaker in the deep space. Looks like there's going to be an injury associated. And coach Ethan Taylor for the flood side, calling for a substitution for flood as well. Bringing Lee Yo in in place of Miller Mercer. Swinson on disc. Great run through. Graydon Scott gets it, puts a big disc up, but it comes off the hand of the Holloway intercept. Some great defensive awareness. Great timing there to shut that one down. Graydon Scott has the vision. He can put the disc long, but when you've got a wall like Holloway in the way, Makes things a bit trickier. Just a smidge. Ireland chasing. Secures it. Lamb with a big sprint down the field. It's not going to go. Finds Coral Huang. For the option. Back to Ireland. And a pick has been called again. These teams have been playing very hard. There's a lot of aggression. There's a lot of that closeness in terms of the intensity. And it's generating uh, a bit of scrappy play. But Huang across to Holloway, up the line to Ella Lamb for the score. Some fantastic work putting AUC Flood up to 11 points within four of the gold medal, five ahead of Otago Toroa. We see again Huang to Holloway. Straight up the line to Ella Lamb. <laughs> Ella Lamb, a fantastic photographer as well, doing a lot of uh, occasional uh, photographic captures of uh, Winter League games and the like that are happening up in Auckland. I believe Ella captures on Facebook. It's probably a page worth checking out if, if you like seeing some really dynamic and interesting sports photography. Six to 11, 65 minutes into a 90 minute game. Big pull, it's got a lot of fade. It's gonna to touch down out of bounds. Tordor with an opportunity to take from the brick mark.
Swinson to initiate. Supported by Shimon. Crosby putting the pressure on immediately. Josh Cooper on a great undercut marked by Owen Sun as the play moves down the field. Hit Liddell. Marked by Giorgio. Those mirror matches, 18 on 18. Love to see it. But it's Shimon who gets it with a big hammer. Looking for Graydon Scott. He's just outside the end zone. Cooper there jumps it, it in. Leo immediately calls the score. Great work there by Tordor, bringing it back within four points, 7-11. And just like the store, this game is wide open. I don't care who you are, that was funny. Tordor to come down on defense against the ever impressive and indefatigable. Indefatigable. Impossible to make them tired, Auckland flood side. You're going to see some of those typical offensive cornerstones. Looks like Ford, Holloway, Mercer, Ireland, Stevenson, Huang. That same line that's seen Auckland flood. Achieved great success in this tournament. Possibly looking to get a couple more points on the scoreboard and rattle their opponents. Securing that victory for them. But at this point, it's too early to say. Beautiful pole, touching down on the near sideline. Mercer, center handler. Just slips through Ireland's fingers there. Giving Toroa another chance. And as Toroa have shown, they don't need a lot in the way of chances. If you give them chances, they can capitalize on them. Swinson, Svetanovic. Great works. King Mercer to slip. Just enough separation. Graydon Scott goes up, comes down with it. Puts up a big hammer under pressure. Great defense from Hamish Ford to shut that one down. AUUC take position one more time. Sitting up on a horizontal stack, quite a shallow one. There's a huge amount of space behind their players to utilize. Troy Stevenson, he's going for it. Manages to get separation from Cooper on the return cut. Ireland's under a lot of pressure. Stevenson gets the disc anyway, lets one rip. Ford's going for it. Pressured by Benton Lynch. Who's there to secure the point? Carl Huang wants it. There it and is. And gets it. Great work by Flood. Huang takes us to 12 over seven. Three points away from a Flood victory. So the signal that it looks to be a female matching majority point. Holly Mays to take the disc for AUUC Flood. Going to be sitting off this point with a pull. Some of those offensive cornerstones in position. 
for the Tordor offense. Looks to be Swinson, Liddell. That was so sad. Scott. Touches just in bounds. Has Graydon Scott taken a sub this game? Possibly not, but it is the final. <laughs> Speaks to his will and conditioning. Mance gets a bite out of Yo. Opens up the reset. He puts up a big shot. Who's going for it? Liddell might be underneath it. It's Swinson. It Closing out. Liddell for the point. What a great score for Tordor. It oh. looks like a travel was called. Some discussion. Or possibly a straddle. Possibly a straddle, it looks like, yeah. So if he did straddle, he needs to re-establish a pivot foot there just out of bounds. There is a travel call further up the field. Unsure at this point what the call actually is. Swinson retains possession. Finds Cooper. Great layout block. But he's able to keep it off the grass. Incredible. How did that happen? Threads one straight through. Unbelievable. For Cooper, you have got to be kidding me. Surely that's got a replay. Please tell me we get to see that again. Unbelievable. Huge layout block, but it lands on the back of the flood defender. To be scooped back up by the Otago team member. We see Swinson with the vision, pulls the disc off the defense to keep that one alive. You have got to be kidding. That has to be the strangest thing I've ever seen in a game of Ultimate in my entire life. A huge bid from the defense. The most opportunistic point I've seen all day. Absolutely. The disc landing on the defender's back and just not thinking to roll over or anything. And the offense is able to keep it off the grass by just picking the disc up. You have got to be kidding me. And then closing out the score from there. Unheard of. Bridget Leg puts up the pull. Stevenson starts us off. Ford and Mercer. Whitlock's going deep. Supported by Ireland in the deep space. Ireland comes back underneath. Whitlock, lots of separation. Puts one up. Great bid! Lamb lays out. Lamb goes to ground, takes that point away. Flood goes up by another one. We are 13-8 game. 74 minutes in, only two points away from a Flood victory now. What a layout, what a save. We have ourselves a game, folks. Leaving everything behind. Each point from here on out is the only point that matters. Teams need to come in with that nil-all mentality. That every single point being played is the only point that counts. A little bit of miscommunication there about what the gender match majority is going to be. And it looks like it'll be male match majority. James Crosby with the disc for the pull. Number 24 for the flood side. Now we've seen these pulls before and we know that he can make them all the way to the end zone. So I'm predicting it hits that far back corner. <laughs> it would be a great opportunity for flood if they can park the disc right in the back of the end zone without it rolling out as the disc will have to be fielded from where it lands. 
Tumble and it just towel. applies that just applies that much more pressure. Big long disc. Not quite the corner, but we'll take it. Fielded very, very well by Swinson. Ben to Lynch. James knee Crosby block. with a casual run through knee. Lee Yo on the near sideline. Jiljuk is an option, but it's not there. Goes wide, finds Owen Sun with a big crossfield hammer. Topping to Crosby. Quok covered too tight for that to go, but Juju's there. Right on the end zone. All of this space right in front of her. She's not going to take it. Puts one high. Touches. A layout, bring it down. A layout is not enough to get it there. A high release, high edge forehand. Topping wanted it. Quok tried to recover it. It didn't come off. Toro with an opportunity now. We know they've got some long throws. Ursum looking to initiate a cut. Tracked by Topping. And so again, we're seeing just a lot of tight handler movement. A foul has been called. Juju with a great bid though on Svetanovic. So we're gonna get to see that again. Here's the angle that we're looking for. From our perspective, not that we're ones to offer opinions on these sort of things. Of course not. But it didn't look like there was a lot of contact, if at all. It looked pretty clean from here. It, yeah, it looked like Jojo played the disc. And, and there wasn't contact until Svetanovic tried to step over her at the end. But it looks like we're going to uh, accept that foul. And so position will retain with Torua in the hands of Svetanovic. Scoops it up. Braden Scott puts one long. He's looking for. There it is. Max Benta Lynch with a cheeky kick spike. Putting one more on the board for Torua. And yet again, proving that every part of your body counts in these sorts of games of ultimate. <laughs> Knees, feet and all. <laughs> Absolutely. But in the case of Max Ben Lynch, it's the hands, the ones that secured that catch, putting Torua on nine, bringing it back to a four point game. We are slowly approaching the soft cap. Flood only two points away from gold. Torua, six points ahead of them if they want to walk away with the gold medal. We're going to get to see that again. What a chase. Absolutely crucial play by Mr. Benton Lynch, number 21 for the Toro side. Braden Scott with a big pull, but it's going to come wide. And it looks to touch down just in bounds in the back corner of the field, right in front of the zone. But Holloway is able to get it to Mercer. Abby Liddell on the mark. Threads it through, finds Lamb. Quick reset to Mercer. Works around. Holloway again. Stevenson. Mark by Cooper puts one out in front. Doesn't even need to lay out. Holloway puts one there long. Lamb's going for it. 
just outside the hands. A great chase by Ella Lamb. Tortua now with an opportunity. Wanting to put one more on the board to capitalize on those little, little execution, those little miscommunications. Whitaker's going deep. Swinson decides to find the easy under in Josh Cooper. Swinson marked hard by Mercer. Mance back to Swinson. Mance again. Graydon Scott. Low and long, eaten up by Troy Stevenson. Zaria Ireland, Hamish Ford. A lot of chip work moving up the line. Great layout for the score. What a dynamic finish to that point. Flood goes 14, one point away from victory over the total of uh, nine. What a huge layout. Please tell me we get to see that again. There it is. Stevenson eats that one up. Ireland. Forward. Ireland. Some great give, go, work. Miles of separation between Liddell on the defense and a layout grab for the score. Unbelievable. Could be it. One break away from a flood victory in the end of our tertiary ultimate championships. Or one offensive hole from Toro and five back-to-back -back breaks. Not impossible by any stretch of the imagination, but it really depends on how these teams are able to leverage their reserves and really dig deep pull the last of their energy out of them to leave it all behind on the field. Pulled by Holly Mace, just about halfway. Svitanovic, marked by Giorgio. Puts a low forehand, but Graydon Scott takes it comfortably, marked by Kwok. Puts a forehand up, and it touches down. A little bit on the low side, maybe the wind caught the edge, started to roll it a little bit early. But this is the flood moment. Live wary. Supported by Kwok. Holly Mace comes down with it over Bridget Leg. Owen Sun's not able to secure the continuation. Swinson on offense. Legs got it, puts one out. There it is. Max Benton Lynch with the score. Otago Toro make it to double figures. 10 to 14. Such a close game, such a hard fought game. That initial handler ISO doesn't look like it's gonna work. So we see Bridget Leg just outside of the zone. Max Bendelich with a perfectly timed continuation cut to put the point on the board. Get to see that again. Graydon puts one out. There it is. Leg and then a left-handed forehand. Beautiful score there by Torua. with AUUC Flood at 14 points. The soft cap no longer matters. We are playing to 15 regardless of how long it takes.
Liddell with a big pull for Torua, fielded by Troy Stevenson, finds Mercer early. This could be the one. Forward supporting what in the hand put. space. Puts one up for Zaria. Is it going to happen? Oh, no. no. Just outside the hands. That could have been the one to seal the deal. But instead, we're working back the other way. We got Graydon Scott. He's worked to Swinson. Back to Scott. Center field marked by Ireland. Lamb trying to apply pressure on the in cuts, but it's Rose Ursum who gets it. Marked by Coral Huang. Oh, too close on that defense. Too much pressure. So it goes back wide across field to Graydon Scott. He puts up the big shot. Troy Stevenson with oh, the massive up. block, but it's an yes. option. Well done, Troy Stevenson. What a fantastic assist. My God, Father, please tell me we get to see that again. The Birdman goes up. He tries to get big. But as they say in Ultimate, catch your Ds. Always catch them, because that's exactly why you do. That Mac pushes the disc deep into the end zone and allows a very aware, a very athletic Josh Cooper to clean that one up. In position, gets the Mac. There's too much float on it. Easily chases that one down for a great score, bringing us within three. Completely 14, possible. 14-11 in favor of Flood. But Toroa needed a hold and back-to-back -back breaks, and that is exactly what they are putting on for us today. Possibly the last time out of the game. Resolve the team's break together. <laughs> All Flood needs to walk away with a gold medal is to make no mistakes. Graydon Scott with the pull. Otago are going to come out with some strong defense this game. They want it. Holloway, Miller. Back to Mercer. Ford on the near sideline, but there's nothing developing downfield. Mercer getting a little bit frustrated. The count's getting high. Billy Dell putting on the pressure. Has to look backwards to find Ford, still marked by Swinson. Ireland with a cut, not rewarded. Marked heavily by Graydon Scott. No stoppage there. Amelia Mance gets up from a trip. Troy Stevenson with the disc. Oh, isn't able to get one away. Precious too much from Josh Cooper. Mercer puts up a forehand. Is it going to come back in? Not no. quite. Only a couple of meters away. Now, as that disc didn't come back in, Otago have the opportunity to take it from where it first exited the field. Can they capitalize on this mistake? They're looking maybe 15, 16 meters away from the end zone. A short field for them to work in as long as they can keep that pressure and intensity going forward. Flood will be looking for every opportunity to push them back millimeter by millimeter force them to make lots of passes force them to to create a situation where the errors will reveal themselves
I said 15, 16 metres. It looks more like 15, 16 centimetres from here. It's a very, very short field for them to work. Swinson finds Mance. Scott on a great upline cut, but there's no one there for him. No one there wants to close that point out. But there it, there is. it is, Josh Cooper. Tightening that gap. Oh, oh. it looks like a, may have, a call might have been made. The calls from the sideline. Hey, Josh, do it again. It was a great cut. He goes for it and gets it. it again. Josh Cooper pulling us within two points. Huge cheers from the Otago representation over here who want to see this game go to Universe. Otago Toro within two. Down by five earlier on in the game. 9-14 in favor of Flood. They have had a hold and back-to-back -back breaks to bring it back within two. Can they keep up this momentum and walk away with the win? This could very well be one of those Cinderella stories in the making. They've certainly got a taste of it now. Flood having some very serious chats down that end of the field. Braden Scott with the pull, sends it high and long. Giving them plenty of time to get up there and set their defense. Flood looking to start out of a horizontal. Lee Yo with a great undercut. Troy Stevenson looking to go long. Wants to test Josh Cooper. He's going, he's going. Puts one up, finding Yo. There it is. is! That's the game! Stevenson to Yo to put Flood at 15. Despite an impressive performance and a great comeback attempt by Otago Torua, the game goes to the team in blue, AUUC Flood. Fantastic finish. Your winners of the 2022 New Zealand Tertiary Ultimate Championships, Auckland University Ultimate Club Flood. A hard fought finish to a fantastic tournament. But well deserved. Absolutely. Brought to you by Ulti TV with the support of University Tertiary Sport New Zealand and in conjunction with Sky Sport Next. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Blair Munro. And I am Genevieve Palmer. Until next time. Thank you. TV.